speaker, uh, Dr. Banki um, from the VU, which I guess is right here in uh, in town. Yes. So our local guy is the last one to get here, and um, it's it's abstract 1910, and in vitro selection of non-small cell lung cancer patients with activating mutations in the tumor epidermal growth factor receptor using carbon-11 erlotinib and positron emission tomography. And we're getting the slides up as we speak. Uh, no rush, we've still got plenty of time. And what we'll do is we'll do um, the five slides and then we'll um, move to discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to uh, present our study entitled In Vivo Selection of Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer Patients with Activating Mutations in the Tumor EGFR Using 11C Erlotinib and PET. So as you all know, um, more and more therapeutic drugs are becoming available. And uh, as uh, all my uh, colleagues uh, also uh, pointed out, uh, these are mainly EGFR TKIs. Um, selecting the best drug is uh, still challenging at this uh, point uh, for every specific uh, patient. And uh, in this case, predictive markers may offer some guidance uh, for personalizing therapy. Activating EGFR mutations, um, as my colleagues also uh, indicated, predict for TKI efficacy. However, um, in diagnosing EGFR mutations, we have uh, a challenge. So representative tumor tissue samples are required to uh, diagnose proper, properly EGFR mutations. Therefore, molecular DNA analysis have to be performed. Therefore, uh, DNA sequencing have to be performed. Um, so tumor tissue samples are required, but not always available. And this has to do with uh, oftentimes practical obstacles, such as difficult to reach sites, uh, tumor heterogeneity, uh, and also low um, the yields of malignant cells. So the molecular pathologist needs at least 30% of malignant cells to uh, come to a reliable um, outcome. Um, so this indicates that there is a need for a non-invasive diagnostic means if no uh, representative tumor tissue samples are available. And we think that uh, PET imaging suits this need best. There are also other good result, uh, research uh, outcome uh, concerning, for example, blood biomarkers. But we think that uh, bed imaging has the added advantage that the spatial dimension is, uh, is, uh, is seen. So what we did is uh, the following. We used PET imaging, um, and uh, we had to choose a tracer. So we sought a tracer that could potentially discriminate the wild-type EGFR tumors from the um, mutated EGFR tumors. And what we did was the following. There was previous research on uh, affinity of erlotinib, and that showed that mutated EGFR had a higher affinity for TKI such as gefentinib and erlotinib than wild type EGFR. So what we did is we labeled carbon 11 to erlotinib and we obtained 11C erlotinib which is actually the more or less the same molecule as erlotinib and um, we hypothesized that 11C erlotinib PET if um, uh, erlotinib would have higher affinity to mutated EGFR. Also, 11C erlotinib would have higher affinity to mutated EGFR. So that would be a technique that could discriminate patients with activating mutations. So what we did was a um, prospective study comparing five patients with wild-type EGFR to five patients with uh, mutated EGFR. We um, performed a test-retest design, so uh, patients uh, got two procedures on one day, and each procedure enclosed a low-dose CT scan, a uh, oxygen-15 water scan, 
and followed by a uh, carbon 11 um, a lot in a dynamic PET scan. These, uh, this procedure was uh, performed uh, on the same day again to have the retest to uh, evaluate repeatability. The water scan was performed to see whether um, the tumors had good perfusion. I want to share um, two examples. Um, of each group one. So on the left hand side we have a uh, patient with a wild type EGFR tumor. On the right hand side we have a patient with an exon 19 deletion in the EGFR. We can see on the FDG PET scan that both tumors are more or less the same size. Um, the patient with the wild type EGFR has the tumor on the left hilum. The patient with the exon 19 deletion has the tumor in the right upper lobe. She also has um, lymph node metastases uh, uh, subcarinal region and if I compare these images with the erlotinib images we can see that on the left hand side again the patient with the wild type EGFR and on the right hand side the patient with the exon 19 deletion the arrows indicate the sites of the tumor and we can see that the uptake of tracer 11C erlotinib is low in the patient with wild type EGFR and higher as indicated by the color code green uh, with the patients with uh, exon 19 deletions I will not go into the details of all our results, which will be presented tomorrow morning at the Presidential Symposium. Um, but I will uh, mention this, that uh, we found that 11 c erlotinib uptake correlated significantly with tumor EGFR mutational status. So that means when the patient had a 11 um, c lot, uh, excuse me, when the patient had a mutated uh, EGFR, the 11 c lot uptake was high, and in the other case, it was low. We also saw that uh, for the patients who got treated with erlotinib in both groups, uh, there was also um, an according finding. So that means if the patient had um, high uptake of elevacy erlotinib in the tumor, they also had a good tumor response on erlotinib therapy. And the other, uh, the other way around was also true. So we come to the conclusion that we found that 11C erlotinib PET shows promise as a non-invasive in vivo means of selecting patients who may benefit from TKI therapy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this paper is now open for discussion. Uh, as people come to the microphone, I'll just say that you know we heard from the other speakers today about tests that involve tissue, meaning you actually have to have enough tissue. You have to have the tissue at the right time in a dynamic way, and this potentially is uh, a way to look uh, in real time, you know, at, at mutations. Have you done it for any other uh, agents? Uh, is this a, a technique that can be used to look at other mutations as well, with different probes? Well, we first wanted to. Uh, to look at AGFR mutations, so because that's the, the most frequent, um, uh, frequently seen mutation. It's somewhat uh, approximately 10% of all non-small cell lung patients, so that's a very substantial part of our uh, patient population. Um, so we started out with, uh, with 11C erlotinib. Uh, other compounds are uh, in the pipeline, so we're, uh, we're doing some uh, research with uh, which will eventually lead to uh, probably other TGIs and also other multi-kinase uh, inhibitors, which will be labeled also. Great. Um, questions now uh, for um, Dr. Banshi or for anyone else? Uh, we have about five, ten minutes for uh, discussion. Yes. Is the PET scan something that you do uh, routinely for the workup, that your diagnostic workup? So you can maybe include this kind of test with the market? Well, actually, um, the FDG PET, um, that is standard in all cases when uh, patients have a curable stage of disease. So our national guidelines stipulate that um, stages one till three have to have an FDG PET. So that's the starting point. And the, um, the great advantage of our center is that we have a cyclotron. So we can um, produce our own isotopes and we can label these small molecules and we can do research with that and um, so I think um, this is this is available in a very few um, number of centers in the world 
Um, yes, please. Um, I had a question, I guess mostly for you, Dr. Herbst. Uh, before Dr. Johnson was talking about how his group has been um, uh, doing testing for uh, uh, EGFR for seven years and for um, uh, KRAS for five years. Um, how widespread is testing going on for those two mutations? And then also we were hearing about the um, LK uh, met. Uh, is it ready to add that as well? Right. I should mention, you know, Dr. Johnson, as you know, is the person, uh, one of the few who discovered that EGFR gene. And so, so he's been doing it for the maximum period of time. I would say in the United States, which is obviously where my experience is, testing for EGFR gene mutations um, has become in most uh, top uh, centers for lung cancer treatment the standard of care. Uh, because that's an actionable mutation. If you have an EGFR gene mutation, that patient should get, um, I think the data have suggested, uh, very likely should be considered at least for erlotinib, either in the front or the second line setting. Many academic centers are testing for KRAS, which oftentimes is mutually exclusive with EGFR. Unfortunately, KRAS, which represents about 30% of patients with lung cancer, mostly adenocarcinoma patients, mostly smokers, still is the elephant in the room. It's a mutation for which we have very few options, though there are some papers here and, and, and there were some at ASCO that combinations of targeted therapies might work there. As far as ALK, um, ALK um, is, I think we've seen, I know, and there'll be some, some talks by Dr. Shaw tomorrow, ALK clearly um, is, is, a, is a translocation, which if identified with uh, treatment with crizotinib, still in clinical trial, does seem to indicate benefit. However, that's not a standard as of now, um, but we'll have to see what happens once the drug, um, or if or once the drug becomes approved. As far as all the other studies that you heard from Leila about, uh, the nice thing is, and maybe she can comment, you can get those uh, along for the ride. So if, you, if you're doing a, a study at some of these hospitals, you can get those two or three mutations, but then the others can be used and then perhaps help in early research studies. Yes, exactly. One interesting point of the study that we are doing is that with a single biopsy, and that's a small biopsy, we are testing mutations for just 10 gene targets. Indeed, we have in our panel, we use, in our institution, we use a snapshot for mutation analysis. Some other institutions from the consortium, they use a sequinone. So we, in the snapshot group, is testing 45 or 48 mutations in 13 genes. So we, part of the study is only eight, but we are testing 13. So we are getting much more information in a single biopsy. So we are testing three or four fish assays and 13 genes by mutation in the same set of few slides. But to answer your question simply, the standard private practice in the United States will send out an EGFR mutation probably to, to a group. Any other questions or comments? We're almost at the end of our hour. Um, if not, I really want to thank the panelists. It's been a very uh, engaging discussion. I um, ask that you stay for a few minutes at the table, and we'll, we'll invite the journalists to come up. And we remind you that we'll have another uh, conference tomorrow.